The woman concealed her distress more than she revealed it. Unwilling for her cherished child to witness her true fury. Striving to maintain composure. She focused on escorting them both home. Upon arrival, she drew in a deep breath and scrutinized her son's arm. Easily discerning the telltale marks once he rolled up his sleeve. Retribution loomed in her mind. They would answer for this. Tara Chavez meticulously researched schools in the Phoenix area before selecting Desert Cove Elementary for her sensitive son, Camden. Ensuring his proper treatment in a nurturing environment with modest class sizes and an emphasis on children's well-being was paramount. Satisfied with Desert Cove Elementary's promise, she promptly completed enrollment paperwork. Unaware of the forthcoming actions that would leave her regretting her choice and sparking online controversy, a term passed smoothly at the school. With Camden thriving academically, forging new friendships, and admiring his teachers. However, as Tara and her husband soon discovered, it wasn't the teachers who demanded scrutiny. When Tara picked up Camden one afternoon, his distressed countenance signaled trouble, instantly triggering suspicions of bullying and stoking her inner rage. Mustering a facade of cheerfulness, she inquired about his day, determined to unearth the truth. Yet, Camden's terse response and distant gaze hinted at deeper turmoil. With gentle concern, Tara probed for details, determined to address any issues head-on. But he remained silent, and understanding his reluctance to speak, she opted to give him space intending to revisit the conversation later with her husband. However, her attention was abruptly drawn to a jarring mark on his arm. Tara leaned in, attempting to discern the nature of the mark, initially mistaken for dirt. Upon closer inspection, it became apparent that it was something more sinister. Whatever had cast a shadow over her son's day was linked to that mark. Of that she was certain. And soon her suspicions would be confirmed. Tara's mind buzzed with questions and suspicions. Yet she restrained herself from demanding an immediate explanation from Camden. Instead, she focused on the road ahead. Her grip on the wheel tightening until her knuckles paled. Concealing her escalating fury from her son's gaze determined that whoever was responsible would be held to account. She drove them home. Upon their arrival, Camden made a beeline for his room. But Tara intercepted him, summoning her husband and ushering Camden to sit. With a playful gesture, her husband guided Camden onto the chair, and Tara broached the delicate topic urging Camden to reveal his arm. As his sleeve lifted, the damning evidence came to light, confirming Tara's worst fears. In stark blue ink, the words lunch money were emblazoned on his arm, a cruel reminder of the humiliation he had endured. In an interview, the angry mother recounted how Camden had been denied a choice with the stamp forcibly applied by the lunch lady. Shock and disbelief clouded her husband's face as he examined the imprint. While Tara captured the evidence with a photograph, despite Camden's protests, the image of her son, screaming and tearful, seared into her memory, fueling her outrage. The realization that her son had been subjected to such public humiliation left Tara incensed. Why had the school resorted to such measures instead of a discreet email reminder about his dwindling lunch account? Angered by the injustice, they took to social media, questioning the morality of such actions. Was this truly acceptable? 
Tara's widely shared tweet regarding the stamp quickly became a trending topic on the internet. Hundreds of shares and comments poured in within hours. Most parents supporting Tara and confirming that her anger was justified. It's not possible for them to just send a note. Her buddy asked. Seeming doubtful. Another user bemoaned. What kind of twisted person brands a child's arm with big block letters? Who was speaking for many others? Most people who saw the message agreed that the stamp was completely inappropriate. However, what kind of reply would the school give? Not long after the post went viral, Tara got a message from Stacy Orest, the principal of Desert Cove. Orest restated the procedure of giving students the option of a reminder slip or a stamp, arguing that the cafeteria staff had never intended to embarrass pupils with reminder stamps. Still, Tara and the chorus of encouraging parents found this explanation to be inadequate. They called for the elimination of the reminder stamps. The school felt obliged to make an official statement about the situation following a wave of negative comments on social media. The Paradise Valley Unified School District's Becky Boss stressed that the school had never intended to make any student feel ashamed. Reminder stamps would no longer be used. Instead, children would be offered the option of receiving a letter instead of a stamp, and the school would implement a policy of informing parents via letter of low lunch balances. However, this was not a singular occurrence. A similar story was told by John, a parent of a third grader at Gardendale Elementary School. John saw the stamp as a, a good job gesture at first. But his perspective changed when he saw it said i need lunch money john and his spouse in contrast to tara would frequently bring their son lunches allowing him to sometimes indulge in cafeteria fare the fact that there was still money in his son's cafeteria account at the time of the stamp was what really infuriated john he angrily said they're treating these kids like cattle, mirroring the anguish of numerous parents dealing with same injustices. In an interview, John stressed how inappropriate it is to write words on a child's body rather than speaking to them directly. It's a kind of bullying and shame. He said, emphasizing the anguish it causes kids. Sadly, these kinds of occurrences are not unique. Lunch shaming is still a common practice across the country, which parents and cafeteria workers oppose due to its degrading and humiliating consequences on children. Lunch shaming takes many different forms, but it usually targets kids whose parents are in debt from school lunches. In addition to the approach of having students stamp messages on their bodies, Schools are also allowed by state legislation to use other punitive tactics. These can include making kids perform menial chores or humiliating them in front of their peers in public. They can also involve replacing hot meals with colder, subpar options. Though some defend these practices as necessary measures to address school debt, others view them as cruel and unjustifiable. Despite facing media backlash and parental outrage, some schools persist in these tactics under the guise of financial constraints within the public schooling system. However, many question whether the ends justify such means. Citing first-hand experiences of mistreatment at the hands of school staff shared by both parents and former students alike. These policies can frequently be both financially punishing and emotionally destructive to children who cannot afford to buy lunches, which severely hinders their emotional development. The startling figures from Feeding America, that is, 16 million American children struggle with hunger each year, make such actions even more puzzling. Although a lot of school cafeteria staff members could be sympathetic to kids who are having trouble paying for their meals. Regrettably, 
some of them don't. And sometimes the problem is made worse by laws. For example, a policy forcing school cafeteria workers to destroy cooked lunches instead of serving them to pupils with lunch arrears was put into place in Pennsylvania's 84th district. These behaviors are diametrically opposed to the values of kindness and compassion upheld by many. Like Kaltiska, who said, God is love, and we should love one another and be kind. Given the world's abundance of money and the basic human need for food, it is inherently unfair for any youngster to be hungry, particularly in a school setting. Certain facts have been changed to protect the privacy of those concerned, and any similarity to real-life events, places, or people, living or dead, is entirely coincidental. After watching the first story above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. Next, let's watch another similar story. The teacher's interest was sparked when she saw something strange hidden in the girl's sock. Once she figured out what was inside, she quickly called 911. There were knocks on the front door that sounded urgent and demanded an answer. Amidst the din, a frantic scream rang out. Hello? Hello? Are you able to hear me? A female police officer stood near the porch, staring through a window. Come on. Douglas. I think there's movement inside. She cried out in a panic. Could they be persuaded to grant us entry? Strongness was personified by Jenny Morrison, a determined mother from Ocus, Michigan. Claire, her daughter, was a shy person who was frequently covered in sadness. Claire's astute teacher, Mrs. Singh, saw through the surface tension and upheld the privacy sanctity by keeping a respectful distance. However, a turning point occurred when Mrs. Singh's worries could no longer be ignored due to empathy and perceptive observation. Jenny tried to hide her pain behind a fake grin, answering questions about her health with a weak justification. But Mrs. Singh's determination did not waver. Jenny's sunglasses concealed a noticeable bruise, which was visible upon stealthy inspection. Mrs. Singh's innate curiosity led her to gently inquire, providing a savior's touch to Jenny, whose calm exterior faltered briefly before crumbling beneath the facade. Even though Mrs. Singh had misgivings, she chose to be cautiously trusting. However, the bruise remained a ghost, a quiet reminder of things that were not said. Days turned into weeks, with Claire's absence casting a shadow over Mrs. Singh's routine. Each morning brought a mix of hope and apprehension, until a fateful Monday heralded Claire's return. Yet, her frail form belied a deeper fragility prompting Mrs. Singh's concern to resurface. Absent was Jenny, the ever-present guardian, replaced by a fatherly figure whose reticence spoke volumes, shrouding their interaction in a veil of uncertainty. Mrs. Singh maintained an unflinching gaze when Mr. Morrison's vehicle dwindled into the distance. With gentle reassurance, she guided Claire into her seat, her perceptive eyes catching a glimpse of something peculiar protruding from the child's sock. Curiosity tugging at her, she delicately unraveled the crumpled paper nestled within. It was a clandestine missive, meticulously tucked away by Jenny, imbuing Mrs. Singh with a mixture of concern and intrigue. Approaching Claire with tender care, Mrs. Singh sought to decipher the nuances of her demeanor, 
mindful of the child's delicate sensitivities. When she adjusted Claire's sock, her fingers brushed against the concealed note, evoking a tremor of apprehension. Unfurling its contents, she was met with a surge of disbelief. Jenny's frantic plea, etched in hurried strokes, sent a shiver down Mrs. Singh's spine, thrusting her into a realm of grim reality. Confronted with the weight of Jenny's silent plea and Claire's innocence, Mrs. Singh grappled with a torrent of emotions. Suppressing her anguish, she masked her distress, determined to shield Claire from the looming threat. Quietly probing, she sought confirmation from the child, her heart heavy with foreboding, with resolve born of urgency. Mrs. Singh swiftly mobilized, confiding in the school principal and orchestrating a discreet call to authorities. A tremor of apprehension tinged her voice as she relayed the distressing revelation. Her determination unwavering in the face of adversity. Principal Baggins, whose sturdy stature was emphasized by an unrelenting dedication to teaching, boiled over with wrath when Mrs. Singh told the police about the terrifying conditions. Not in my school. He growled his contempt evident. The nerve of some people. They shouldn't be parents. Law officers arrived on the site in a matter of moments. Their scowled expressions reflecting their mutual anxiety when they read the note. Would their help come at the right time? There was a strong sense of urgency as they hurried to get to the Morrison's house through the rundown streets. They came to locked doors and an echoing silence that matched their growing fear. Led by Mrs. Singh. They screamed for any sign of life, but were met with impenetrable barricades and barred windows. So they became desperate. Were they left too late? The group listened in quiet expectation as a slight sound broke the silence and brought them to a startling discovery. They crossed the threshold, confronting an unimaginable scene of bloodshed. Their resolve born of duty. Mrs. Singh flinched away in terror at the macabre scene that was revealed to her. Jenny's beaten body a graphic reminder of her agony. A glimmer of hope appeared amid the mayhem as they banded together to obtain medical assistance. Determined to save Jenny from her suffering, Meanwhile, in the tranquil confines of the school, Claire remained oblivious to the turmoil that engulfed her world. Shielded from the harsh reality by the compassionate principal, she was gently apprised of her mother's plight, cocooned in a cocoon of warmth and reassurance amidst the storm. Assistance was on its way for Claire, evident in the widening of her eyes now clouded with worry and confusion. Her innocence shattered under the weight of the painful truth regarding her family's situation. Yet, this revelation marked not the conclusion of young Claire's ordeal. The information proved a bitter pill for her to swallow, thrusting her into a situation uncommon for girls her age. From the looks of it, she scarcely comprehended the contents of the note before her. Her trembling frame and tearful gaze betraying her inner turmoil. The principal could only speculate as to how deeply distressed Claire was. Still, the worst was not over yet. It was well known that Claire didn't fully comprehend the situation due to her young age. Still, Peeks behind closed doors gave her a peek of what was really happening. She would eventually come to terms with her father's absence and its consequences. The wounds from the trauma would not go away for years. Even as this chapter came to an end, Claire stayed mute the entire time. Her big eyes riveted on the principal and her lips trembling with unsaid inquiries. 
Her youthful mind was full with uncertainty. And her heart was heavy with worry. Was her mother going to be okay? Would happiness ever again fill their home? Observing Claire's trepidation and terror. Mrs. Singh crouched beside her and gently held the small girl's hands. Claire. Your mother is getting help right now. In an attempt to offer comfort in the midst of the chaos. Mrs. Singh comforted her softly. The authorities and medical professionals are tending to her. Still. Claire asked with piercing concern in her eyes. Will mommy be okay? Is she secure? Mrs. Singh was touched by her simple question. With a voice full of sincerity. She answered. I promise you. Claire. We will do everything in our power to ensure your mother's safety. The people in charge are working hard to find the person causing her grief. Recall that your mother and you are not alone in this. A flurry of feelings appeared on Claire's face when Mrs. Singh's words sank in. Deep sadness, bewilderment, and terror all blended together on the delicate surface of her countenance. She was too little to really understand the seriousness of the situation. But she was old enough to know that something had broken in her world. Child Protective Services was called in the middle of the chaos to make sure Claire was safe and to get her a place to stay. Mrs. Singh saw Claire's fragility and knew that she needed comfort and care during this difficult time. Days melted into weeks as Claire acclimated to her new surroundings. Placed under the care of Mrs. Singh and her compassionate family, Claire found herself enveloped in affection a beacon of stability amidst the chaos. Meanwhile, the investigation into Jenny's case gained momentum. Law enforcement officers labored tirelessly to amass evidence and construct a robust case against her assailant. Steadfast in their pursuit of justice to ensure Jenny and Claire's safety. As word of Jenny's ordeal permeated the community, a wave of solidarity surged forth. Individuals united to offer their unwavering support through organized fundraisers, delivered meals, and generous gestures from neighbors, friends, and even strangers. The outpouring of love and empathy served as a glimmer of hope amid the prevailing darkness. However, Mrs. Singh remained keenly aware that Jenny's journey to recovery was far from over. Broaching the subject with Claire proved daunting. Fraught with the risk of unsettling the fragile peace they had cultivated. The principal steeled himself for the inevitable task ahead. Delivering the sobering news of Jenny's critical condition and the unsettling revelation regarding her father's implication as a prime suspect. Recognizing the importance of maintaining Claire's connection with her mother. Mrs. Singh facilitated supervised visits between Claire and Jenny at the hospital. Amidst the sterile confines of the hospital room, Claire clung tightly to Mrs. Singh's hand. A silent testament to the emotional turmoil she endured when she beheld her mother ensnared amidst a web of tubes and wires. Claire's eyes flickered with a blend of anguish and elation when she stood by her mother's side. Despite Jenny's unconscious state, Claire's emotions surged as she cautiously approached. Unsure of how to navigate this bittersweet moment, tears cascaded down her cheeks when she clung tightly to her mother's hand. A silent testament to the depth of her emotions. Nearby, Mrs. Singh observed the poignant reunion. Acknowledging the long journey ahead with a mixture of somber realism and hopeful anticipation. Over time, Claire's visits to the hospital grew more frequent. Each encounter offering a chance for catharsis and connection. Gradually, 
she began to confide in Mrs. Singh, sharing her fears, uncertainties, and confusion. Together, they embarked on therapy sessions, learning invaluable lessons in resilience, setting boundaries, and rebuilding trust. Though challenging, each small stride forged a stronger bond between them. Mrs. Singh remained steadfast in her support, understanding the importance of accompanying Claire until her mother's eventual awakening. A milestone shrouded in uncertainty. As days stretched into weeks, Claire maintained a steadfast vigil at her mother's bedside. Her unwavering hope buoyed by Mrs. Singh's comforting presence and guidance. The community's outpouring of support continued unabated, spotlighting Jenny's ordeal and igniting a collective determination to combat domestic violence. Generous donations facilitated Jenny's medical care and bolstered their long-term recovery efforts. Yet, amidst the progress, setbacks loomed, accompanied by waves of emotional upheaval. Claire grappled with feelings of guilt and confusion, wrestling with self-blame for her inability to shield her mother. Mrs. Singh provided solace and reassurance, dispelling Claire's misguided beliefs and offering unwavering support. Recognizing Claire's artistic talents as a form of emotional expression, Mrs. Singh arranged for her artwork to be showcased at a local gallery, a gesture that kindled a sense of accomplishment and pride. Meanwhile, the pursuit of justice pressed on as authorities tirelessly searched for Jenny and Claire's abuser. Despite the elusive nature of their quarry, hope persisted that he would be apprehended, affording Jenny and Claire the opportunity to reclaim their lives without fear or apprehension. The principal understood the immense challenges facing the young girl before him, each obstacle appearing as insurmountable as towering mountains. Though aware that his words held little power to alleviate the situation, he endeavored to offer reassurance. However feeble, that time would eventually bring solace. As hospital staff tirelessly worked to stabilize Jenny's condition, Mrs. Singh remained a steadfast presence at her side, a beacon of hope amid the darkness. Despite their fleeting acquaintance, she prayed fervently for Jenny's safety, determined to stand by her until she could stand on her own. Hours passed with no sign of improvement, Jenny's condition remaining perilously unstable. Then, a sudden downturn sent shockwaves through the room, leaving Mrs. Singh grappling with a sense of helplessness she hadn't felt in years. In a moment of desperation, she found herself turning to prayer, beseeching for Jenny's survival amidst the flurry of medical activity. For Mrs. Singh, time seemed to slow to a crawl when she bore witness to the chaotic scene unfolding before her. The weight of the tragedy bore down heavily upon her, shattering the barriers she had erected to shield herself from such heartache. Tears streamed down her cheeks when the events of that fateful day replayed in her mind, each moment etching itself into her memory with painful clarity. She couldn't fathom the ordeal she and Claire had endured, the trauma searing through her soul like a branding iron. Yet, amidst the turmoil, one moment remained seared in her memory, the arrival of the officers at the hospital. A bittersweet reminder of the resilience that had sustained her young student and her fractured family. As the police sought official statements from Mrs. Singh and Jenny, it became painfully clear that Jenny was in no state to speak, a stark testament to the harrowing journey that lay ahead for them all. Jenny was still asleep in front of Mrs. 
sing. Unaware of the chaos that was happening. In her instinct for defense. Mrs. Singh tried to shield her. In an effort to bring Mr. Morrison to justice. The authorities carefully documented Mrs. Singh's testimony and made an effort to gather more evidence against him. Mrs. Singh cooperated as best she could. But the information she gave had less of an effect than expected. In order to put an end to the chaos, they needed to know where Jenny's husband was. Which meant they needed to speak to someone who knew. Would anything come of their efforts? Mrs. Singh advised speaking with the administrative desk at the school. As they are renowned for keeping accurate records when it comes to parental information. They usually had phone numbers and, if they were lucky, addresses, which were vital in case of the kid's emergency. The officer's patience wasn't put to the strain too much because Jenny woke up as soon as Mrs. Singh left, giving Mrs. Singh optimism. Would fear prevent Jenny from speaking to her husband? Or would she be able to find the confidence to do so? The reckoning was almost here. When the officers asked Jenny to retell the events of that fatal day, they found her to be cooperative and forthcoming. But despite all the information, one thing stood out above the rest. They knew where Mr. Morrison was. Do you know where we can find your husband? The officer asked. His voice laced with empathy and raised eyebrows. Jenny swallowed the lump in her throat as she struggled with conflicting feelings. Would she put an end to her torturer's oppression and break her silence? Jenny hesitated. Her decision weighted so heavily that tears streamed down her cheeks. At last. She said the fateful words and disclosed where Mr. Morrison worked. Equipped with this fresh lead, the police proceeded quickly to arrest him, guaranteeing Jenny's safety and release from his despotism. The dawn of justice was heralded by the sirens of the authorities as they stormed the fishing shop where Mr. Morrison worked. When Mr. Morrison realized they were there. He started to run. But the officer's unwavering yell stopped him. As Mr. Morrison made a tragic fall down the fire escape in his desperation to avoid punishment. Cries of. Don't let that man slip away, resounded across the area. His destiny was sealed when the police moved quickly to apprehend him and hold him responsible for his heinous crimes of abuse and domestic violence. In the aftermath, Jenny embarked on a journey of healing, navigating the arduous path of physical and emotional recovery. Supported by a compassionate community and bolstered by the interventions of social services, she found solace in temporary shelter when she reclaimed her strength and rebuilt her life. Meanwhile, Mrs. Johnson liaised with local support networks, ensuring Jenny received the necessary resources and guidance to facilitate her rehabilitation through therapy and counseling. Amidst adversity, Claire's voice emerged. Her once-muted demeanor evolving into a resilient spirit fueled by empathy and the resolve to confront abuse. Guided by the unwavering support of Mrs. Singh and other compassionate individuals, she emerged as a symbol of resilience. Determined to break the cycle of violence, their collective journey sparked a wave of change within the community. Igniting awareness campaigns that empowered others to speak out against domestic abuse and extend support to those ensnared by its insidious grasp. Jenny's transformation from shame to pride inspired countless others. Shedding light on the silent battles fought by survivors of domestic violence. Within the confines of the small school, Mrs. 
Singh's act of bravery rippled through the lives of numerous children, altering not only Claire's trajectory but also that of her entire family. Where once pain and trauma reigned, now bloomed a future adorned with love, support, and the promise of brighter days ahead. After watching this story above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. Next, let's watch another similar story. An eight-year-old arrives at school, his head encased in ice, prompting the teacher's closer inspection, which leads to a heartbreaking realization. Education often deemed paramount for securing employment and ensuring a promising future, remains an elusive dream for countless individuals worldwide. While some are denied this privilege, others endure abysmal conditions within public school systems, where decrepit facilities and apathetic educators thwart meaningful learning experiences. Students wang amidst tattered books and disheartening environments with teachers lacking the motivation to impart knowledge, thus consigning them to a cycle of ignorance and impoverished prospects. This narrative sets the stage for a poignant account, underscoring the indomitable spirit and sacrificial nature of a young protagonist, serving as a testament to the transformative power of resilience. Our tale revolves around Wang, an eight-year-old from China grappling with the recent abandonment by his mother, which thrusts his family into turmoil. Left to fend for himself and his siblings, Wang's father embarks on a desperate quest for employment in the bustling city, leaving the young boy in the care of his septuagenarian grandmother, Zhao. Despite the hardships, Wang shares a deep bond with his grandmother anchoring himself in familial ties amidst adversity. The grandmother, a tender and nurturing soul dedicated to her family's well-being, resided over five kilometers away from Wang's school. Compounding the challenge was her lack of driving skills or a license. Moreover, Wang began to observe signs of aging in his beloved grandmother who grappled with encroaching deafness and debilitating arthritis, hindering her ability to care for him and his siblings as she desired. Despite these adversities, Zhao remained resolute and optimistic. When her son sought her assistance in caring for her grandchildren, she readily embraced the responsibility without hesitation. Wang a diligent and bright child nurtured by his exemplary upbringing, harbored aspirations of entrepreneurship, envisioning a future where he could alleviate his family's plight. Proficient in mathematics, he demonstrated remarkable prowess, impressing his teachers with his aptitude and dedication. They recognized his potential and anticipated his transition to advanced classes. Yet his mother's sudden departure shattered his world. Unfazed by the disruption, Wang faced the logistical challenge of making the daily commute to school. Living in an impoverished area without access to public transit, he made the daily five-kilometer trek from his grandmother's house to school. Even with the difficult four-hour walk each day in the warmer months, Wang never wavered in his commitment to learning. Wang had an exhausting four-hour walk to school every day during the severe winters in northern China. Lows as low as 5 degrees Celsius made the biting cold a formidable obstacle. Although his grandma feared for his safety, she found it difficult to understand the unyielding will that drove her eight-year-old grandson to take such risks. Why don't you stay home? Darling. In these frigid temperatures, school cannot be that important. His grandma begged him every day. Her concern visible when she saw Wang bundled up in his few clothing and determinately carrying his backpack. I can't afford to sit around. Grandma. No. 
It is my duty to accept education. Wang declared with unyielding resolve. Even though he knew that his grandma was worried, he didn't let that stop him from being determined to secure his future. In an attempt to ascertain his reasons, his grandma gently questioned him, asking, Wang, what motivates you to put up with such hardships? For your folks, is it? Do you think you're to blame for your mother leaving? Wang held his feelings close to his chest and stayed silent in spite of her gentle promises. He had become more and more solitary when his mother left him. Confiding in no one, not even his father. Wang dodged her queries and comforted his grandma. Not wanting to add to her already overwhelming concerns. Then stepped back out into the bitter cold. Grandma. It's nothing like that. I just want to be a regular child and study. He whispered giving her a quick embrace before heading out into the chilly morning. Completely unprepared for the below freezing weather, Wang clung to his ambitions of academic achievement and a life free from want. Determined to complete his education and forge a brighter future for himself and his family, he was determined to pull his family out of poverty. In spite of the bitter weather and his grandmother's cries for him to stay at home, after a few weeks, Wang continued to go to school every day despite the cold without complaining. That fateful January morning. Though, the cold proved too much to bear. Wang persisted in going to school, citing a crucial math test. In spite of his grandmother's entreaties and worries for his safety, Wang, please think it over. His grandma watched him get ready to go, growing more anxious as she begged him to wait for the weather to become better. Grandma, I can't spend the day at home. Wang adamantly stated, I have to take this test, providing a quick assurance before departing. Worrying his grandmother, Wang defied her desires and set out on the perilous voyage. His resolve unyielding in the face of growing danger. He left her for her. Kissed her gently on the cheek. And vowed to come back. Determined to do his homework no matter what. He had expected the cold. But on the way over he hadn't realized how bad it was. Wang had never felt the bitter cold. He continued despite his eyelids getting heavy and his feet becoming numb. His eyebrows and hair went completely black, impairing his vision. After an hour, he could no longer feel his toes or fingers. When Wang arrived at the school in time for his exam, his classmates and teacher were shocked to see him motionless. Wang, what took place? The teacher ran to his side and screamed. Are you all right? Warmth slowly returned to Wang's body when he thawed indoors. Too tired to reply. The teacher cautiously approached, thinking the worse, and saw that Wang had frostbite in his hair. Professor, may I begin my exam? Wang inquired, keen to get started. His plea was granted by the teacher who was impressed by his tenacity. With his cheeks burning, Wang struggled to grip his pencil when he sat at his desk. He showed incredible tenacity and resolve by finishing the test much ahead of his classmates. Despite the discomfort, Wang's teacher was quite disturbed by the circumstances after the test. Even with his extraordinary perseverance and persistence, by bringing Wang to the principal's office. They tried to stop similar things from happening in the future. Wang, I need you to be completely honest with me. The teacher said, perceiving that Wang was aware of how serious the matter was. Do you walk to school from your grandmother's house every day? 
even though it's over five kilometers away. Wang knew what his teacher was about to ask. So he nodded seriously. Yes. Instructor. I go for daily walks regardless of the weather since it allows me to attend courses and pursue my education uninterrupted. He was comforted by the teacher. No. Wang. You won't be punished. Together. Let's try to solve this. They went to the principal's office to discuss the matter in a consoling manner. The principal saw Wang's predicament and expressed worry similar to the teacher. By taking Wang's picture, they hoped to spread the word about the need for transportation support for kids from disadvantaged backgrounds. Then, using the school's page on social media, the principal posted Wang's picture. Wang's story gained hundreds of thousands of likes and comments in a matter of days after going viral. People from all over the world expressed their compassion and support for Wang and their desire to help make sure that children like him never had to endure such suffering. The director wrote a moving statement next to Wang's arresting shot, saying, This boy risked his life to sit for an exam at school. If we had been in better circumstances, Many of us would have waited for better weather, taken the day off, and taken the test without endangering our lives. However, Wang's fortitude won hearts all throughout the world after that terrifying morning. Wang's tale, which went viral, spurred major change for many other kids going through similar struggles as well as for him. Donations were so generous that a bus transportation service for kids living distance from the school could be established. Furthermore, Wang received the best mark in his class despite sitting the exam in difficult circumstances. A few months later, he moved on to a more advanced class. So his education matched his aptitude. Wang's story perfectly captures the reality of many young people who like him, have unfavorable situations in their lives. His bravery is a source of inspiration, showing that hardship can be overcome and new routes to success may be created with perseverance. After watching the stories above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. If you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe and share our channel that all about today's stories see you next time